Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Easy Online English. I'm Sahara, and today we're introducing a new video series for you. We call it Language Hacking. Language hacking is where we will teach you the history and the linguistics of the English language so you can get a deeper meaning of the language. And you'll be able to learn and guess the words even if you haven't、uh, ever seen them before. So, if you are studying English for academics, or maybe you're studying it for test prep like the IELTS,、uh, this kind of series is definitely for you. And in this video, we're particularly looking at prefixes. And prefixes are small sounds, are words that are added to the beginning of other words, and they change the meaning of them. If you want to know the translation in your language, be sure to check the translated subtitles here. So, the prefixes that we're looking at in this video are male and bene. And these two words come directly from English Latin roots, right? So, they come directly from the Latin language. That they spoke in Rome many, many, many years ago. So, very simply, male means bad and bene means good. So, let's look at how these words are used in the English language. So, the first one is malevolent, and then the next one is benevolent, right? So, malevolent means that. Um, you are being hateful or you're wishing evil or illness onto somebody. And benevolent means that you are being kind or you're wishing goodwill onto somebody.、All、right. So let's look at these in a sentence so you can see and understand them better. Now, in our example sentence, it says, He has dark. Malevolent eyes. He has dark, malevolent eyes. So he has an evil glare or an evilness to his eyes. Let's look at another one. She believes the house is haunted by a benevolent ghost. She believes that the house is haunted by a benevolent ghost. So it's a nice ghost. It's a good ghost. <laughs> It doesn't want to hurt her. These words are both used very generally to mean good or evil in English. So let's look at some vocabulary that uses male. The first two words are malice and malicious. Malice is the desire、uh, to do evil things or to harm someone. And malicious is the adjective, right? So it is、uh, having or showing malice. And we mainly use these two words、uh, when you want to describe the emotions that are associated with violent crime. So you'll hear these a lot used in courts or with lawyers. And prosecutors. So、um, here is an example sentence for you. The prosecutor must prove he has malicious intent. The prosecutor must prove that he has malicious intent, right? So that he thought about it and he had hatred towards this person and he committed the crime. So let's look at another word that uses male. And this is also a legal word. And、uh, it is malfeasance. Malfeasance is、uh, the illegal actions or the wrongdoings of a public official or a governmental official. And of course, we use this when we're talking about fraud or we're talking about embezzlement or white collar crime. So here it is in a sentence for you. 
They fired the CEO and they're investigating for corporate malfeasance. They fired the CEO and they are investigating for corporate malfeasance. Right? So illegal activity that the corporation or the person has done. Our next word comes from the world of mental health. And this word is maladjusted. Maladjusted means that uh, you do not uh, have the ability to adjust to social situations or social environments. So it's not really something nice to say to somebody <laughs> if you want to describe them as a maladjusted person. Maybe they're not stable or maybe uh, they're antisocial or something. But mainly you hear this word being used in the mental health professions um, and it's usually used to describe the behavior not always the person, because again, that could be direct and very rude. Um, so here is an example for you. The patient's maladjusted attitude causes many conflicts in their relationships. The patient's maladjusted attitude causes many conflicts in their relationships. So maybe they're not emotionally stable, and it causes them to have issues in social situations. Okay, guys, so let's transition and talk about words that use binning. And we're going to do this by looking at a pair of words that go together, one male and one binning, again. And these words are malignant and benign. Now, these two words, you mostly see them uh, used to describe cancer, right? So malignant means that something is causing death or it is fatal. And benign means uh, that it's not causing death, it's, it's not harmful, okay? And like I said, we mostly use this when we are talking about cancerous tumors, actually. So here's an example sentence for you. The test results came back. Her tumor is benign. Her test results came back. Her tumor is benign. So good. Uh, or you could say her tumor is malignant and the doctor said it's spreading quickly. Her tumor is malignant and the doctor said it's spreading quickly. So it's not good. She might die soon. So let's go and look at some more general words now that use binning. And these words are benefit and beneficial. The benefit is a noun and it is uh, just an advantage or something that is useful or helpful and it produces good results. And beneficial is just the adjective form of that. So it's some describing something that is producing good results or helpful effects. Right. And like I said, these are more general words. We use them more generally to describe things, but there are two specific occasions where you would use benefit. Uh, and benefit could be uh, the advantages that a company offers an employee or uh, a charitable event, right? So a charitable event is specifically called a benefit. Right? So let's, let's look at these words in some sentences to help explain. Uh, the first one is my company offers many health benefits. My company offers many health benefits. Right? Or you could tell somebody that exercising is really beneficial for your health. Very general statement, right? So exercising is really beneficial to your health. And here's the one I said that's used with charity. The charity benefit is tonight downtown at the hotel. The charity benefit is tonight downtown at the hotel. So there's a specific event, they're having 
for charity. Maybe they're raising some money for a cause or something. And you will see benefit or you would see uh, Bene used a lot when talking about charity or donations. And uh, these next two words really describe what I'm talking about when I say that. And the first word is beneficiary. And the next one is benefactor. So a beneficiary is someone that receives something helpful. This is usually like a gift or a donation or something. And a benefactor is somebody who gives the gift or somebody who gives the helpfulness to somebody else. And like I said, this is specifically used um, when talking about donations or charity or uh, when you're talking about somebody's will. And a will is a contract that somebody creates uh, to divide their assets after death. So here's an example to describe it for you. An anonymous benefactor donated money to the school. An anonymous benefactor donated money to the school. So anonymous person gave it money to the school. Um, here's another one. According to the will, so according to the contract, she is the sole beneficiary of the estate. According to the will, she is the sole beneficiary of the state of the estate. This means that she is receiving uh, the full estate. Maybe this is, includes a house and all of the assets that are associated with the house. Um, and she is the sole beneficiary. This means she, she's the only person receiving it. Nobody else in the family is receiving it. Okay, so let's review before we go, right? So male and bene are both prefixes that come from the Latin language. And male means bad and bene means good. So if you see them at the beginning of a word, you can guess, even if you don't know what the word means, that one might be bad and one might be good, okay? And we've made a chart here for you that we're showing right now. And here is all of the things that you've learned today, right? So male generally means uh, something is evil or it's associated with hatred or causing harm. And bene generally means good. And uh, it's associated with kindness, generosity, and being harmless. And here are all of the words that we went over today in this lesson for you. So thank you guys so much for watching another video here on Easy Online English. And if you think this video is beneficial, go ahead and share this with your friends that are studying English. And if you didn't know, Easy Online English now has a website. Yeah, we made a website and we have some free lessons and free study materials there for you. So go check out that website now and let us know what you think. See you later.